All right, everybody, everybody. Uh, for the first like few months after the election, it was like another day, another wine from Hillary Clinton. And then for a while, it was like another day, another Russian claim or another like Nazi moment, like, you know, Pepe's racist and stuff. And we've gotten to the point for the last few days, it seems like every day we have a new Mueller investigation problem, like some problem with some permutation of Mueller's investigation as, as a, a unit or someone associated with Mueller you know, in the past or present, or, or something within the FBI or DOJ that seems to indicate that the investigative process there is not entirely fair. This time, it appears, and he's in, I believe, congressional questioning today or tomorrow. Uh, Andrew uh, McCabe, or McCabe, I don't know which pronunciation. Uh, it looks like there were emails signed Andy, and they're assuming that this is, I think he's like the number two guy after Mueller. He's certainly in his inner circle. He's right up there in the intel agencies. It appears that he was mentioning some sort of insurance policy against Trump should he be elected. This indicates to me, any sane person looking at that from the outside would say, this person is referring to having dirt on Donald Trump that is intended for release should he be elected in order to destroy his presidency, in order to, to kneecap him, uh, either to make him less effective at, at designing any policy and getting anything done, sort of to cripple and weaken, or to get him forced out. Now, probably it would be the former. But here's the thing. Could we not envision the possibility that uh, that in part was is it the Billy Bush tape or something like that that, uh, that was already leaked? Couldn't we imagine that? How do you know it has anything to do with Russia? It doesn't say anything about Russia. It doesn't say anything about collusion or anything criminal. It could just be, hey, Trump's piggish. Trump says weird off the wall shit sometimes because, you know, yeah, he was a wrestling manager or sponsor or head or I'm not exactly sure because I never pay attention to wrestling. I do know it was funny to see him shave that other dude. Now, I'm going to get flack from any wrestling fans for not knowing his fucking name, but I, I really don't give a fuck. Uh, <laughs> and from The Apprentice and all this stuff, Trump likes to say weird things. He likes to get attention. He likes to be flashy. This is how he survived in business. He can, he can sort of out flashy his opponents, like having the biggest peacock tail around. Well, yeah, it's, it's definitely an advantage for what he's trying to do, branding himself and getting people to sign on and, and you know, buy into his businesses or his franchises, as it may be. Uh, that's the way he does business. When I see that somebody in an intel community has referenced an insurance policy against him, my immediate inclination is to discard the, the Mueller bullshit and say, well, that's, I don't believe it comes to anything. At this point, if Mueller were to come out tomorrow and implicate Trump, it's not even 100% uh, that the Republicans wouldn't close ranks and protect him anyway. Because of how dirty the Mueller investigation and people associated with it have become, it's not even any more clear that if he had actual proof that Trump had done something wrong, that unless it was something, something at least at the level of literal treason, that they would even bother prosecuting him for it. I doubt that they would. At this point, at this point, even if they have dirt on Trump, I don't think it goes anywhere unless it is literally treason against the United States. And I don't think that they're going to find that. I think that Manafort's fucked. I think Flynn's kind of fucked. I think that other people near Trump and, and probably go over into the Democratic uh, realm too, I think some of them are going to get prosecuted. But I don't think that Trump will face any repercussions because I don't believe that he colluded with a foreign state. And if they find, well, Trump cheated on his taxes like 10 years ago, nobody's going to fucking care. Nobody's going to do anything about it. They'll fine him maybe. They'll fine his business. They'll dissolve one of his uh, skyscrapers and uh, put the money in the treasury or do some other bullshit. And he'll say, ah, who cares? Go ahead and take the skyscraper. I got, what, 70 more of them where that came from? He's referencing this insurance policy, and I have uh, every reason to believe that it has something to do with some uh, strange behavior on Trump's or some, some clip of him saying a racial slur, which, trust me, a lot of his core fans wouldn't care. They'd be like, oh, well, PC needs to die, so, you know, that's to his credit. Nobody would care. Uh, or it's him saying something like a Billy Bush moment. It's not going to do anything. Hell, they pray, if they have any dirt, they probably didn't release it because in the wake of Billy Bush, they realized that they had done their worst and couldn't do anything further. Uh, it looks like, though, at the very least, people within the FBI and DOJ are, are rude, uh, routinely very anti-Trump. How can you expect this indicates? Mueller says, and others say, like people associated with him, 
Well, yeah, everyone has a personal bias, but they're not going to let it get in the way of their work. Bullcrap. Every, any sane individual who's worked with others knows personal bias affects the way you do work. It doesn't even have to do so consciously. I would love to believe that people that we pay taxpayer money to like lord over intelligence and stuff are, are special snowflakes and can be unbiased. Like, you know, 50s G-Man, like Nick Valentine is up there somewhere, you know, locked in a closet doing his synth stuff. And that that's the sort of person, you know, people with nobility that we have working as like spies and agents and stuff. But I'm also, I'm, I'm intelligent enough to know that that's propaganda. That's not the way it works. That sort of image of the, uh, the silent, very grave-faced uh, agent waiting on the corner, you know, silently looking over the population, making sure the bad guys are, are not successful, that's a, that's a bullshit myth. It'd be wonderful if it were that way. More often, some rogue agent is selling cocaine on the side from some Colombian cartel. That's what happens most of the time in the intel agencies. Or they just miss that they're inept. They're not perfect. Look at the Boston bombing. Boston Marathon. They were looking at Tsarnaev for a year. They had a tip-off from Russian intel, too, several years in advance after several years of uh, surveillance there. They knew that he was radicalized. They did but fuck nothing to stop him. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Now, what a great, what a great job that the FBI did stopping them. <laughs> Usually, if a terrorist attack or something else is stopped at all, it's stopped by some local police force. Or in some cases, like I think it was the, uh, what was it, Garland, Texas, there was some, it was a mall cop, a private security guard, it wasn't even a real cop. There's someone who goes around on a moped and like, like you know, checks and makes sure people aren't double parked. Uh, and he stops the shooting. You know, Texas is hardcore. Uh, now you've got a, a reference to an insurance policy against a sitting president by somebody, you know, relatively high up within one of our government's own bureaus. Don't you think that's concerning? When you put it uh, together with what else we've seen, where FBI agents are like, oh yeah, you know, Trump is, is evil, Trump is a bad person, Trump is like crazy or stupid. When I see that there's such a level of disrespect for a sitting president within a bureau, uh, it's, it's concerning. And part of that is probably individuals in their own innate political biases. Some of those people, are, they're literally partisan Democrats. Others are partisan Republicans, but I have no problem with Trump. Okay, well, that be that as it may, the fact that they're talking so apparently openly about this with one another, that's the concerning part. Go ahead and have your bias. We know that you're going to have it. It will affect the way you do work, but when you're like openly discussing it with other agents, uh, how, how are we supposed to have any faith that the investigation that's going on will be fair. Like that you're not going to specifically dig for dirt just because you fucking hate the, the president. And then Comey made his cryptic remarks about not headhunting after people and just looking at facts or whatever he said. Some people are interpreting this as a, as a warning to other agents. Hey, cut it out. Uh, you know, you need to have a fair investigation because if you do uh, screw around with it in order to uh, basically, you know, uh, attack the president, it uh, wouldn't be a good idea. Because if you get found out, you're the one that uh, you're the one that ends up on the hangman's dock, so to speak. You have a tough time of it. Uh, yeah, it could that could happen? Uh, Comey may be warning these people, or he may it might be a warning to Trump. Uh, people are interpreting it both ways. Uh, the way I look at it, I don't expect the investigation to turn up anything. I think Trump is just fine. I think he knows it, which is why he doesn't even bother talking about it most of the time. He doesn't. Other Republicans have been talking about it arguably for the last week more than he has. He's too busy with tax reform. That's the other thing. He knows that after that, his approval probably skyrockets, probably gets to at least 40%. He'll be just fine. That's well out of impeachment territory, trust me. 40% is totally survivable and safe. Hell, it's re-electable. If it weren't, uh, you know, we wouldn't have, uh, <laughs> we wouldn't have uh, had a second term of Obama, I think. I think, wasn't he hovering around 41 at most at the time, then it, then it rises because he's being compared to Romney. And, you know, Romney's basically a slightly older, more boring Obama with an R after his name. Same thing. People aren't going to switch presidents when they're not being given an alternative. It's not going to happen. It's like Clinton, third term of Obama, which is basically to say, what, the uh, sixth term of a Bush presidency. You know, or, uh, yeah, well, no, eighth, because Bill Clinton counts too. They're all neoliberals, so all the same thing. That's about all. Peace out.